Welcome to my classroom. This is one of the little corners I have and you can see it's just filled with tessellations. So the project we're talking about is the tessellation project and I've been doing this every year for years uh, in geometry and I think you'll come to love this. Before we get to the specifics of the project and how it works, let me take you on a little tour of some of the greats over the years. Let me take you on a quick little tour of uh, some of the tessellations. Here's the queen from Snow White, the evil queen looks like. We got some cows or moose, um, maybe a horse. We got dogs and pink elephants. I love those clowns. Those are like my favorite of all time. Um, birds and fish. I like the coloring in this one, amazing. Some more elves. Some sort of princess, very cool theme here. Uh, we can see, I don't know what these guys are, but they're kind of cool. Looks like the Santa's elves. I don't know, quite a variety you can see. Maybe just quickly I'll explain, see how this one is spinning. This is made by rotations. This one's made by a translation, made by translations. You can see the difference. This one has a spin to it, so it's uh, rotations. But anyways, you get a real good sense of a variety of kinds of things that you can create and make in this project. I think you're going to have a lot of fun with this project. So, let's start talking tessellations. Do you like elephants? Do you like flowers? Oh, let me zoom out just a little bit. Do you like super spacemen? Do you like cows? Do you like fish? Do you like scary ghouls? Or maybe reindeer? Do you like freaky looking clowns? Uh, ooh, how about Batman? Do you like Batman? I like Batman. Anyways, these are just a couple of cool examples of some tessellations. And so let's teach you how to actually make one. So the idea is starting with a basic shape that we know tiles the entire plane. And what we mean by tiling the entire plane is that it fits itself forever and ever and would cover the entire surface. So an example of how this works, uh, one of the most basic examples, is a translation. So the idea is what you would cut from one side of the square, we would slide it straight across, match vertex to vertex, midpoint to midpoint to get at the right spot. And what we get is an Audi and an Innie. And they match each other, so I know this Audi will match this Innie every time. Those are some pretty technical math terms. So, let's make one now. So here's maybe uh, our first translation. Nothing too crazy. And then maybe we make a second translation. So now Two sides have been translated. Things you're noticing, I'm cutting vertex to vertex, going to the opposite side, and so on. And it made this shape. I don't know what this shape is. Actually, I do, but you don't know what it is. So we turn it, and we say, do you see anything there? And you go, ooh, I see a... Uh, and you turn it here, and you say, I, I think I see a nose. I don't know, and we turn it until you see something. If you don't see anything... Ooh, there's something there, I think. Then you give it to a friend and say, what do you think it is? And they might say, I see a boat. Oh, I see the sail and the little guy fishing. One thing I want you to notice is that the water is just a part of the shape. You don't have to think of the outline as the full shape, for instance. Or you might have saw that guy with a really pointy nose. That's kind of goofy, but you could have. Or... Maybe you saw the elephant that I saw. Now, let me just show you what happens when you find your shape. Is that the parts that um, came out will fit parts that go in. So let's see if I can uh, do that. Hold on just a second. Oops, I gotta, I gotta, gotta reflect it. So this part will match up right in there. And um, let's see here. And this part would match up right in here. And there'd be a part 
here that would match up in here and so on. Do you see it start filling out? Uh, a translation creates what I call lines in the pattern, but really they're translations. Do you see our elephant sliding across the paper? So that's what a translation does. Another uh, transformation that does what we want it to do is a rotation. So instead of translating that goofy looking cut to the opposite side, we can cut it and rotate it about that vertex and place it up there to see that. Now the trick is if you cut from this side and tape to the adjacent side, you must cut from the next one and tape. So you continue in the same pattern. You can't cut both of these and rotate them into those spots because those are opposite rotations and will not work. You'll know it doesn't work once you try and copy it, but basically cut and tape, cut and tape. Okay, very important. So let's look now at actually making a shape. So if we started with, you know, a nice little, little square and we made some goofy little bump and we rotated it. And if we did that a second time, uh, cut and tape, cut and tape, we get some shape. And again, the question is, you know, what what is this shape? And so we say, I don't know. Well, maybe I see something there. Uh, I don't see anything there. So we rotate it around. I definitely see something here. I see a couple things. So let's show you what I think I saw. I saw a frog. Ribbit. That is an ugly frog. I saw the eyes of a kitty cat. Not bad, not bad. And then I definitely saw this dude. Now, I don't know what this guy's got going on for hair, but he's definitely got a lot of hair. Now, again, if we take multiple copies and begin to fit them where they go, we begin to see... Uh, our pattern forming. This time, instead of translations forming, we get rotations forming in our diagram, which is quite cool, I think. Uh, let's see if I can get maybe one more in there. You can see a nice rotation there, and so on and so on. Kind of a cool swirling pattern that takes place with a rotation. Now, rotations and translations can work in other shapes. Uh, we know that the hexagon does tile the plane. So we could take it as our starter shape and do translations to opposite sides, just six sides instead of four uh, in the square. So here's an example of a translation-based one. Uh, I cut from this side, slid it across, cut and slid, cut and slid. doesn't matter what direction you go as long as you're translating and I got this shape now as always I'm going to say to you what is this shape and we look at it funny and we say hmm well here's what I saw I saw this little guy here and he kind of makes a clown like looking thing and if you match them side by side I only colored or detailed a couple of them but you can again see the pattern forming if we went to a rotation in a uh, in a hexagon, it would go cut, tape, cut, tape, cut, tape around the circle. And I made one of those as well. Here's, I cut it and, and taped it. I cut, tape, cut, tape. Got a really goofy looking shape. Oh, what am I going to come up with with this funny thing? And I must admit, it was a little tricky. Somebody said, Hey, it's Bart Simpson. And I think you're right. That is Bart Simpson. I didn't know how to draw Bart, so I created a piranha. And this piranha uh, is cool as far as I'm concerned. Anyways, he spins. He looks awesome. Cool stuff. The last shape that we're going to deal with is the equilateral that tiles the plane. Because it has an odd number of sides, we're going to pull a cool trick. We're going to rotate by 60 and then do a half point rotation. So there's my rotation of 60, and then there's my 180 rotation right there about the midpoint. 
And again, I am always going to ask you that magical question, what is this thing? Uh, hmm, do you see anything in there? Ooh, maybe I do there, maybe, I don't know, is that a bird? Is that, I don't know. Well, I, I had a couple ideas. I saw a snake. I don't know, that's an ugly snake. Then I saw this cool little dude with a little big hat. <laughs> Not bad skills for a math teacher. And then finally I saw what everybody else saw, the alien. I don't know, my friends. I just wanted to show you how when you make shapes using like a rotation, like in this case, it creates these beautiful spirals in the diagram. So here's there's a lot of good examples there to work from and get an idea of what's going on.